Okay, before you read week one, let's take a look at where we're going this week. And we're going to be reading the book of the Gospel of John, John chapters 1 through 10. And we're going to be looking at principles 1 and 3 in the uh, in the 201 uh, booklet. In fact, uh, let's just t- take a look real quick at what principle 3 is. Principle th- number 3 is major on the majors. And what that means is that we shouldn't get caught up in little debates or confused by uh, some of these unfamiliar stories. We should keep it simple, uh, get the big picture and major on the majors. There's nothing more major, there's nothing more major than the person and work of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what the book of John is all about. John chapter one opens up like this. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It's actually talking about Jesus that this verse is saying, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God. In fact, Jesus is God. Jesus was God. Jesus is God. Chapter, or verse 2, he was, Jesus was with God in the beginning, and through Jesus all things were made. Without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. And in Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, if you know the Old Testament at all, this might sound a little bit familiar, because Genesis chapter 1, the Old Testament starts off the exact same way. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then it said in verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so if we compare that with John 1, we see that there's a lot of similarities. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Compared to in the beginning, God created all things. God said, let there be light. So we see this idea of light. The light, verse 5 in John 1, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In fact, Jesus is the light. It says in verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And he was in the world, Jesus was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. So again, Jesus is now being equated with the light of life. Later on, we see he's equated with, uh, with living water. He's equated, equated with the bread of life. And we see just a lot of John, the, the author John is really trying to give us an understanding of the importance of the person of Jesus and also of the work of Jesus. In John chapter 2, it, we get to begin to see the work of Jesus. In John 2, it's Jesus' first miracle. He changes water into wine. I'll let you read that passage for yourself later on. But the in- interesting thing here is that he changes. This This is what, in, in the end, it says uh, Jesus did this here in the in Cana of Galilee. It was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory. In other words, who he really was. And his disciples believed in him. And what's interesting is Jesus' first miracle is to change water into wine, while in the Old Testament, Moses' first miracle was to change water into blood. And uh, when Moses changed water into blood, it was to represent the judgment and wrath of God coming to Pharaoh. And when Jesus came and turned water into wine, wine represents joy. Wine represents, in in the Jewish mindset and understanding, wine represents joy. And so I don't think it was incidental that Jesus changes water into wine as his first miracle because it was a sign of what his ministry was going to be all about. His ministry was about bringing joy, bringing light, bringing life to mankind through his person and his work. And we're going to see that in John. In John chapter 3, he he comes and he teaches this Pharisee named Nicodemus. And and uh, it, he was kind of a he was a ruler among the Jews, a spiritual ruler, and and Nicodemus was interested in seeing what kind of a person this Jesus was, even though many of the of the Pharisees disagreed with Jesus and thought he was uh, he was just uh, worthless. Uh, Nicodemus recognized that there was something special about Jesus, and uh, and Jesus told Nicodemus who he was, and. Uh, and Nicodemus, you know, the, the goal was that Nicodemus could find Jesus and, and understand who Jesus is. Look at what he says in John 3. Maybe you've, that you've recognized this. It says in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And so then again, Jesus shows uh, what his purpose is in verse 17. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And so we see verse 19, he says, this is the verdict, light has come into the world, but people loved 
uh, darkness instead of light because of their deeds. Verse 20, but 21, but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so it might be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So Jesus is talking about his role in, in shedding light, and in, in other words, making it known what God's purposes are and the way to God. Uh, and, and he's explained to Nicodemus the way to God. Um, and and we'll, we're going to learn that more and more, uh, that the way to God is through Jesus Christ. We learn that in 101, that Jesus is the only way to relationship with God. John chapter 4, we see Jesus talking with a Samaritan woman, and some of the same things come up. He's, uh, she's coming to get water, which is, which is important in, in, uh, in, the, in their culture to be able to have access to water. And Jesus is, is equating himself now with water. In verse 13, he says, Everyone who drinks this water that you're, that you're coming to draw from will be thirsty again. But he says, But whoever drinks the water I will give them will never thirst. And indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And he wasn't talking about physical water. He's talking about himself, that he is the water that quenches everyone's thirst. And so we see he's, he's light and he's water. He's, a, he's equating himself with those things. And then finally, John chapter 8, you're going to read this later on in the week. Um, in John eight fifty eight, he's talking to a bunch of, of Jewish leaders. And he says in, in this verse, very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. So in here, he's not just equating himself with light or water. He's actually equating himself with God himself because the words I am, uh, these were these were the words of, this was the name of God that, uh, that God told Moses in the Old Testament. He said, this is my name. I am that I am. And Jesus is claiming that name for himself. In other words, he's saying that he's God. In fact, the Jewish leaders picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid away. And so we see that Jesus is not just a good prophet. He's not just a good guy. He's not just coming to bring great news. He is actually God himself. And we see in 101, if you want to go back and read 101, we see how fundamentally important it is what Jesus, not just who he is, but what he did to bring new life and freedom to anyone that wants it.